unlock hidden treasures waiting to be discovered in your life. We're handing you the biblical keys right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a fascinating show for you. Have you ever seen the bumper sticker that says, Jesus is coming, look busy? Do you know when he's coming? Are you ready? Pastor Mark Biltz is with us today to reveal God's timetable, but first, a little background. Pastor Mark Biltz burst into the public eye with revolutionary teachings about the biblical blood moons. His groundbreaking research and innovative theories have earned him guest appearances on both radio and television worldwide. Biltz feels an urgent call to reveal what the Hebrew prophets said concerning end times and has written God's Daytimer to help Christians get on God's timetable now. Mark, good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. Well, it's, been, it's been a while. Yes. Well, we've completely redone the set. I you didn't know it. you were going to be at the Whaling Wall tonight, I right? Love the Western it. Wall. It's great. Yeah, it's a big change. Well, it, it's, it's so good to see you again, and I'm so excited about your new book, God's Daytimer. You talk about God's timetable. Sure. What does that mean? Well, I ask a lot of people if they believe in divine appointments, and they all say yes. And then I tell them, well, guess what? They're scheduled. You know, there's actually divine appointments when we can meet with God, but it's going to be on His time schedule, not ours. Too often we want to make God meet with us at, on our schedule rather than realizing we need to meet with Him on His. For example, in uh, Genesis 1.14, God created the sun and the moon, the lights, and it says He created them for four particular reasons. It wasn't light and heat. That's not what the first one's mentioned. Uh, the first one is science. And then it says for seasons. But the problem is the English language. Uh, when we think of seasons, we think of fall, but the Hebrew word is moed, and it means a divine appointment. And then when it says days and years. I, I don't, I don't want to yeah. miss that. We talk about the feasts of the Lord. We talk about the festivals right. of Israel, but in, a, in effect, they're modim, they're appointed times of the Lord. And that brings out so much more meaning. Well, this is why you want to really understand the Jewish roots of the Bible, because the same word they translate as seasons in Genesis, they translate it as feast in Leviticus 23. So does Moed mean fall or food? They're both wrong. <laughs> you know, this is why you need to understand their divine appointments. Uh, I used to live on a time zone uh, change in Garden City, Kansas, between central time zone and mountain time zone. And unless you've experienced this, you don't know what it's like to live on a time zone border. You have to have two clocks. You can walk across the street and it's an hour later. And that's without traffic. So you can be late for a meeting or early for a meeting, well, depending. You had to have two clocks, one for wow. work and one for where you live. And so uh, but if I want to call somebody to go over to eat or whatever, we had to make sure we knew whose time zone that we were going to be meeting at. Well, it's the same thing. Uh, God, he wants us to meet him on his time schedule. I give the example of a, an employer who tells an employee to meet with him at four o'clock on Friday before the weekends. Uh, what would the employer think if the employee said, no, that doesn't work in my schedule. You meet with me at two on Monday. Uh, I tell him, you probably won't have a job on Monday. And so God determines when he's going to meet with us. And then we either can come to the meeting or stay away. It's our choice. Yes. And, and the implication, of course, we want to be at the right time, at the right, right. place. It's God's timetable and, and not ours. Mark, what did the, what did the ancient uh, Hebrews, the ancient uh, Jewish community know about God's calendar that Christians need to know? Because this is part of your life message. Oh, it sure is. One of the things is when we realize that not only were they divine appointments, they were called holy convocations. Now, convocation means an assembly, like you could have a high school convocation. But the Hebrew word mikra implies more than an assembly. It implies a dress rehearsal. And so what they would be doing every year, they would be going through the prophetic dress rehearsal of what was going to happen 1,500 years later. This is why every year at the appointed time on Passover, they would slay the Passover lamb. 
because he's going to die on Passover. Mm. They would even slay the Passover lamb at three in the afternoon. Well, that's the time of the evening sacrifice. At nine in the morning in the gospels, it says it was the third hour of the day and they bound Yeshua to the cross. Well, here's what's incredible. Nine in the morning is the time of the morning sacrifice. So every year on Passover, at the time of the morning sacrifice, they would bind the Passover lamb to the horns of the altar. At that very precise moment, they were binding Yeshua to the cross. Remember in Revelation, it says Yeshua was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That means God had it all planned out. It's not like Jesus died and the father goes, oh no, we got to go to plan B and resurrect him. Okay, <laughs> he knew he was going to die, but can you imagine how horrible it would be to experience the death of one of your children? I mean, may it never happen to anyone. But the father says this, look, I am pre-planning my son's funeral. I'm gonna determine what day he's going to die. I'm gonna determine what time he's going to die. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm gonna determine what songs are gonna be sung at my son's funeral. He had David write the Psalms that would be sung on that fateful day, the very words. And so at nine in the morning, when Yeshua was being bound to the cross, that same moment, they're binding the Passover lamb to the altar. Josephus records two million Jews were in Jerusalem for Passover. So there's a two million member choir. Mm. And what is Yeshua hearing all of them sing? At that very moment, they're binding him to the cross. Psalms 118 is the Hallel. Wow. That's what they're the singing. The great Hallel. And at the end, what are they singing? Bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. I, want, I don't want people to miss that Psalm 118, which is so messianic. Huge. Uh, the, the, which, which is a prophecy, includes a prophecy, the stone that the builders rejected has yes. become the chief cornerstone. What's so powerful about that, uh, if your audience may remember, that it says they sang a hymn at the Last Supper, went over to the Mount of Olives, I know the words to the song they sing. And everyone can't believe it. And I say, it's Psalms 118. Beautiful. We gotta take a break. When I come back, I wanna talk about blessing. We okay. all wanna be blessed. And when you connect yourself to the appointed times of God, you receive blessing. What kind of blessing? I'll talk more with Pastor Mark Bilt straight ahead. I'm gonna give people the keys to how to unlock God's day timer so they can get into his appointment book. And can no you imagine that, get it, getting God's calendar? Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah to the Jew first and also to the nations. We share the gospel at festivals around the world and we also provide life-saving medical help to Jewish people living in dire poverty. Modern DNA testing has confirmed that these people are descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Many of these Jewish people we reach have maintained their Old Testament traditions and rituals for thousands of years. They need to hear the gospel and receive medical care. Time is literally running out for these sons and daughters of Abraham. Infants, toddlers, and the elderly are the most likely to die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. Medical care that most of us take for granted is desperately needed now, and the need is enormous. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. They open the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. That's why your gift is crucial. For your gift of $35, we'll sow two special resources into your life. First, we'll send you God's Daytimer by Pastor Mark Biltz. Would you like to have a divine appointment with God each day? Do you want to tap into the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and be blessed? God's Daytimer is the book you need for yourself, your family, and your friends who want life-changing biblical revelation and abundant blessings. We'll also include our Five Minute Feasts bonus version DVD by Rabbi Jonathan Burness. Learn about the joy that comes from honoring God's biblical feasts of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Your entire family will enjoy this entertaining DVD. We'll send both of these to you for your gift of $35. And if you really want to bless scattered Jewish tribes like these, please consider becoming a new monthly partner or increase your monthly partnership. 
When you do, you make it possible to share the gospel and provide urgent medical care. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Call today to bless the Jewish people by becoming a new monthly partner or to increase your monthly partnership. As our thank you, we'll sow both of these great resources into your life and we'll add God's Daytimer DVD. This DVD by Pastor Mark Biltz is a perfect companion to this book. Learn why celebrating biblical feasts can unleash miracles. We'll also send you this seven-piece set of Celebrate the Feasts tent cards. Each card contains an easy-to-follow recipe, key scriptures, and Hebrew blessings translated into English. Don't wait. Call the number on your screen now. Please specify offer 1921 when giving $35 to receive this book and DVD. Or to receive all of these gifts, call now to ask about a new or increased monthly partnership. You can also donate $100 to receive all of these gifts. Specify offer 1922. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. Welcome back. My guest is Pastor Mark Belts. He's the author of a new book. It's called God's Daytimer. And it's also a DVD. You've yes. done both a, a book and a DVD. What is, what is God's Daytimer? Well, God's Daytimer is his appointment book. And he has scheduled appointments. Wait, he wait, wants wait. To you meet. mean we can get God's appointment book into our hands? Can you believe it? Sold. Uh, uh, that's why I even have a lock and a key on that day timer because I'm going to give people the keys to how to unlock God's day timer so they can get into his appointment book. And can no you imagine that? Getting, getting God's calendar, his day timer, and knowing where he's going to be, when he's going to be? I love it. It's so incredible. I tell people, do you want to be at the wedding of the Messiah? And they go, yes. And I said, then why wouldn't you want to be at the dress rehearsal? Because each one of these divine appointments are dress rehearsals for prophetically what's going to be coming. I, I want to show a verse here that I think applies to this, and it's Romans 11:25. Oh, I love it. Which says that a blindness has happened in part, meaning that some Jewish people like myself and thousands of others believe that know that Jesus is the Messiah. We've had our eyes open, but there's a blindness that's happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. I don't believe that's the full number. I believe it's fullness. Well, what that implies is maturity. He's waiting for the maturity of the church to grow up. And this is part of it, though. Exactly. The restoration of the Jewish roots of our faith is part of that maturity. But the amazing thing about Romans 11, it says because of their unbelief, the non-Jews have been shown mercy. But then the next line says, but guess what? They'll believe when you show them mercy but we haven't shown them mercy for 2,000 years. And they wonder why they don't believe. Uh, it, we haven't uh, given them anything to identify with. Uh, well, my goodness, do you remember Joseph? His brothers came to Egypt, they didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize him? He looked Egyptian. He had an Egyptian name. He was dressed as an Egyptian. Well, the church has been presenting an Egyptian Jesus for 2,000 years. There is a responsibility that every Christian bears, also in Romans 11, that their salvation then brings them into the responsibility of provoking the Jewish people to jealousy. I see this doing that. Huge, because the church has only been provoking them to anger. And they need to provoke them to jealousy. And the way to make them jealous, uh, I like to explain it this way. When I was a little kid, I was about in first grade, and I had this nice red tricycle, man, that I just wheeled all over the place. And of course, it got all beat up and old, and I threw it in the trash. Well, it so happens, the trash man lived like three doors down. And he took my tricycle out of the trash and he painted it and cleaned it all up and gave it to his son. And then I saw his son riding my tricycle. <laughs> uh, oh, I want it back, it's mine. And he said, no, you gave it away, it's mine. And he heads off with the tricycle. And I, I remember that because the way you make the Jews jealous is things that they have discarded or things they don't have interest in. All of a sudden you pick those lost treasures up 
these golden nuggets and you begin to celebrate them. They're wondering, how come you're so happy? Why are you doing this? I want and it, it looks, back. And it looks nicer than anything they ever did. Exactly. You know, the Passover is more exuberant. It's more joyful. Oh, oh yeah. It has the full meaning of Messiah yes, and exactly. our salvation. Exactly. And that's the blessing that comes that the Christians have in connecting. One of the things that we do, and in the book, I talk about how the spring feast fulfilled his first coming. And then I go into the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and prophetically how each one of those will be fulfilled on that day. You remember in 1 Thessalonians 5, a lot of people say, well, he comes as a thief in the night. We're supposed to be stupid and ignorant. Okay. I say, not so. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, when it comes to the times and the seasons, don't be ignorant. Well, that word there is referring to the Moedim, which is why and I think in verse four, he says, that day will not overtake you as a thief in the night. I'm telling you, this is for a Jewish believer to see this kind of restoration is absolutely awesome because I know that it's connected yes. to the salvation of Israel. Yes. The eyes of the church are being opened. Yes. And the eyes of the Jewish people are being opened. God's Day Timer, it's a book, it's a DVD. We want to get these resources into your hands. Pastor Mark Biltz is going to be back in a moment to tell us why the book of Galatians contains some of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. There's verses in the book of Galatians that are probably the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Very misunderstood. And the reason why is... Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. We share the gospel at festivals around the world, and we also provide life-saving medical help to Jewish people living in dire poverty. Modern DNA testing has confirmed that these people are descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Many of these Jewish people we reach have maintained their Old Testament traditions and rituals for thousands of years. They need to hear the gospel and receive medical care. Time is literally running out for these sons and daughters of Abraham. Infants, toddlers, and the elderly are the most likely to die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. Medical care that most of us take for granted is desperately needed now, and the need is enormous. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. They open the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. That's why your gift is crucial. For your gift of $35, we'll sow two special resources into your life. First, we'll send you God's Daytimer by Pastor Mark Biltz. Would you like to have a divine appointment with God each day? Do you want to tap into the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and be blessed? God's Daytimer is the book you need for yourself, your family, and your friends who want life-changing biblical revelation and abundant blessings. We'll also include our 5-Minute Feasts bonus version DVD by Rabbi Jonathan Burness. Learn about the joy that comes from honoring God's biblical feasts of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Your entire family will enjoy this entertaining DVD. We'll send both of these to you for your gift of $35. And if you really want to bless scattered Jewish tribes like these, please consider becoming a new monthly partner or increase your monthly partnership. When you do, you make it possible to share the gospel and provide urgent medical care. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Call today to bless the Jewish people by becoming a new monthly partner or to increase your monthly partnership. As our thank you, we'll sow both of these great resources into your life and we'll add God's Daytimer DVD. This DVD by Pastor Mark Biltz is a perfect companion to this book. Learn why celebrating biblical feasts can unleash miracles. We'll also send you this seven-piece set of Celebrate the Feasts tent cards. Each card contains an easy-to-follow recipe, key scriptures, and Hebrew blessings translated into English. Don't wait. Call the number on your screen now. Please specify offer 1921 when giving $35 to receive this book and DVD. 
or to receive all of these gifts, call now to ask about a new or increased monthly partnership. You can also donate $100 to receive all of these gifts. Specify offer 1922. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. Pastor Mark Biltz is our guest today, and he'll be right back to tell us about some very misunderstood verses in the Bible after I answer a few questions from our viewers. It's time now for Ask the Rabbi. We get some very interesting questions from our viewers every week on topics ranging from Jewish customs to the last days. So now it's your turn to ask the rabbi. Our first question comes from Helen in Wheeling, West Virginia. Hi to everybody in West Virginia. And the question is, what's the difference between a Hebrew, an Israelite, and a Jew? This is a great question, and I can give a long technical answer, but the simple answer is nothing. They're the same people, but they're uh, snapshots of a people at, a different, at different periods of time. So when Abraham was called, he became the father of the Hebrew nation. He was a, a Hebrew and his descendants. After the 12 tribes and the establishment of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, in Egypt they became known as the Israelites. And late, later on when the kingdom divided the southern kingdom from Judah became the Jews and through history the Jewish people. That's a very simple answer, same people, different periods of time throughout their history. Next question comes from Jerry in Springfield, Missouri, who wants to know, is the Trinity Jewish? Well, Jerry, the answer is absolutely. We don't have a concept of a Trinity, but if you look through the Torah, the prophets, the writings, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, you clearly see the revelation of Elohim, which is plural, God is plural, but he's a unity within a plurality that's what Echad means. When we declare that God is one, He is truly one, but He reveals Himself in the Father, in the Redeemer, or the arm of the Lord, the branch of the Lord, the Messiah, and then, of course, the Spirit of God. You can find all three in the Jewish Scriptures, but as far as the Trinity, we Messianic Jews refer to God as a tri-unity. He's not three gods, it's one God, but manifest in Father, Son, or Messiah, and Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. You can submit your questions to us at jvmi.tv and then follow the link. And who knows, we may pick your question for an upcoming program. Pastor Mark Biltz has been our guest today. And Mark, a final thought there's verses in the book of Galatians that are probably the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Yes. Talk about that. Very misunderstood. And the reason why is people don't know the context. For example, in Galatians, people say, we don't need to keep the feast because he's talking to these uh, foolish Galatians and he says, why do you observe days and months and years? But guess what? He's not talking about the feast there. When he talks about the feast, he uses different terms. In Colossians, he talks about don't let anyone judge you when you observe the Sabbath, the new moon, the holy days. So who were the Galatians? This is why you have to know the context. Do you remember in Acts 14, when Paul and Barnabas were going through Turkey, okay, through Galatia, uh, all of a sudden they healed this one man and they thought that one was Mercury and the other was Jupiter and they began to worship Paul and Barnabas. And he said, you know, quit it. We're not gods. You know, you need to worship uh, the God who created all the stars and the moons and the planets that you're worshiping. Guess where that happened? In Galatia. The Galatians were the ones who worshiped the planets, Jupiter and Mercury, and worshiping the gods of astrology. 
And so what Paul is saying to the Galatians, why in the world are you returning back to these foolish calendar, going observing days and months and years when you have the biblical calendar? And then they also misinterpret Colossians, because in Colossians 2, when he's telling them, don't let anyone judge you in the Sabbath, the new moon, or the holy days, what he's saying is this, the Colossians were next door neighbors to the Galatians. <laughs> and he's saying, don't let these foolish Galatians judge you because you are keeping the Sabbath, the new moons, and the holy days. And so we have to realize, too many people take Galatians and Colossians and think they're both talking about the biblical calendar but they don't understand the context is to the Galatians. He say, get off this Beautiful. stupid calendar. Beautiful, and we're no longer under the law. Why? Because the law <clears throat> is now written in our hearts. God's Day Timer, it's a DVD, it's a book. It, this is, these are resources we want to sow into your life as you help us uh, reach Jewish people. You sow into their life and it transforms their life when they hear the gospel. Next week, we've got a fascinating show for you. Here's a sneak preview. We believe with the heart and we confess with the mouth and that requires confession. Your financial support of this ministry helps us bring hope and healing to suffering Jewish communities. We sent a video producer to one of our medical outreaches to show you the difference that your donations are making. When you partner with Jewish Voice Ministries, where does your money go? That's what I wanted you to see, so I set out to capture what goes on during our medical missions. My name is Mark Meissner. I'm a field producer. This is the story of someone extraordinary, your donations blessed. His eyes are open, but he cannot see. 19-year-old Elias has been blind since he was two. Elias told me his family disowned him because he was blind. They believe he was punished by God, so they sent him away to live in an orphanage. An ultrasound revealed Elias had detached retinas. Doctors could not restore his sight. I asked Elias if he was sad. He said, no, Mark, I am happy. No way was I going to abandon Elias at this point. I took Elias to a tent where several prayer warriors took over. They shared the good news of Yeshua with him, and Elias accepted the Lord into his heart. Elias remains blind but he now has a new vision, a vision of Yeshua. I may never see Elias again, but he will always have a place in my heart and in my prayers. And I am so grateful Jewish Voice gave me the opportunity to see a life changed. We believe with the heart and we confess with the mouth and that requires confession. It requires confession in the very areas that we need to appropriate God's promises. Speak Hebrew scripture without any study, without any background, without any preparation. I'm talking about a five minute deal here. I wanna thank our guest Mark Biltz and remind you that Psalm 122.6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. So pray for the peace of Jerusalem this week. Until next week, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you.